Thank you, the moderators, and thank you, uh, Sages, for giving me this, uh, this chance to present our study on uh, cholecystis management. I'm Adrian Thorm, a pediatric surgical trainee from the University of Hong Kong. And we have nothing to disclose. So uh, cholecystis was first reported in 1817, and it was uh, uh, reported to be a congenital dilatation of the biliary ducts, which involved both the intrahepatic and also the extrahepatic ducts. The incidence of the cholecystis is around 50. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So the incidence of the cholecystis was around 15,000 live births, and you, uh, the incidence is particularly high in Asian, which it can be as high as one in 1,000. And uh, the etiology of uh, cholecystis was remain unclear. And, uh, and uh, the, it was uh, postulated that uh, anomalous pancreatic biliary junction may be uh, one of the uh, pathogenesis of the disease. Uh, because of the reflux of the pancreatic juice into the uh, biliary ducts, it leads to the subsequent uh, uh, weakening and also the uh, cystic dilatation of the ducts. And as for the classification of the cholecystis, cyst, it was classified according to the Todanic classification. And with being type 1 and type 4 being the most common types, and uh, type 1 referred to the first form dilatation of the common, uh, uh, common bowel ducts, and type 4, apart from the first form dilatation of the common bowel duct, it also involved the dilatation of the intrahepatic duct as well. As mentioned, type 1 and type 4 uh, has, uh, comprises the most of the cases with up to more than uh, 90%. As for the surgical management of uh, cholecystic cysts, uh, early operation uh, is advocated for patients uh, presenting with cholangitis, pancreatitis, or, or stone formation. As for asymptomatic disease, uh, there has been a long-term association of uh, cholecystic cysts and uh, the development of cholangiocarcinoma. And according to the st uh, uh, retrospective studies, that uh, the risk of uh, developing uh, cholangiocarcinoma increased with the age of the patients, uh, with less than around 1% in infants, but it rise up to more than 10% if the cholecystis uh, linger on uh, to adulthood. And it even go can go up to 50% where if it goes to uh, more than uh, 50 years old. And, they, and studies have compared the patients with only cyst uh, re uh, Drainage versus the patients uh, receiving complete cyst excision, which finds that uh, the, uh, there was a significantly high risk of developing cholangiocarcinoma for those with incomplete excision. And as for the surgical principle, and a complete excision of the cholecystis cyst followed by a reconstruction with, uh, to, re uh, to uh, restore the continuity with the gastrointestinal tract is essential to uh, treat the disease. And uh, traditionally, a uh, rule and wine uh, reconstruction has been flavored by the uh, conventional surgeons. However, in this era of uh, laparoscopic surgery, actually uh, the hepatic didinostomy is scanning its popularity. And laparoscopic surgery was first reported in 1995, and it was uh, confirmed by subsequent study that it is uh, feasible and uh, is yet uh, is a demanding technique. And actually now, more than 95% of our patients uh, receive uh, excision of the uh, cholecystis with uh, laparoscopic means. So to compare the Ru and Y uh, HJ with uh, hepatic and uh, the traditional uh, HJ has a long history of uh, safety. And, uh, it, but the setback is that it involves two anastomoses and have a higher anastomotic uh, complication rate. And it involves more uh, intestinal obstruction in terms of adhesive IO and also uh, internal herniation. And in the long run, it has more anastomotic structure and also stone formation. What about uh, hepatic It has, uh, it is uh, believed to be more physiological, and it also allows us to have a postoperative endoscopic assessment of the anastomosis after operation. Although uh, literature states that it has a more biliary reflux. So the background of our study is that uh, up till now there is only few good quality studies to compare the outcomes between the HJ and HD group in children, and uh, with uh, retrospective studies and meta-analysis. Uh, uh, shown that there is shorter operative time and also faster recovery of bowel uh, function in the HD group. And, and however, uh, there was uh, reported to have a high occurrence of biliary reflux uh, in the HD group. And despite all these studies, uh, all of them are mainly uh, on short-term outcomes and, uh, mainly, and they are mainly on the open, open excision of the surgery. 
And the aim of our study is to uh, compare both the short-term and also long-term outcomes and, uh, uh, for patient receiving laparoscopic excision. We have a retrospective uh, study, uh, review of all the patients uh, having the uh, laparoscopic excision of uh, cholidocal cyst from 2004 to 2018. And uh, all the, altogether, around 54 patients was identified in our database. However, we exclude 12 of them uh, and before uh, 2010 because of we want to eliminate the effects of a learning curve. And uh, finally, we have 42, uh, 42 patients being identified, with uh, 21 uh, of them going to the HJ group and 21 of them went into the HD groups. As for the demographics, uh, most of the parameters of our patients are uh, quite comparable. Uh, one of the uh, limiting factors in the demographic is that we find that uh, significantly more patients have a cholangitis uh, prior to the operation goes into the XJ group with a higher, uh, significantly higher uh, bilirubin level and also significantly higher uh, proportion of them receiving uh, preoperative cholecystostomy. As for the short term outcome, and uh, the operative time, the blood loss, and also the stay in the uh, ICU are significantly shorter in the HD group. Uh, we also find the uh, hospital stay shorter, although it's uh, statistically not significant. Which, regarding the long-term outcomes, our patient received a uh, contrast meal and follow-through around a year after the operation, as shown uh, by the graph over the left side, this patient in the HD group, uh, which showed an uh, early uh, contrast uh, reflux into the BD3, as uh, shown here, uh, in ar around 15 minutes after the study. And this is the patient receiving the uh, XJ, and uh, the contrast reflux uh, occurred later at around uh, two hours after the operation. And in this study, we can actually find that uh, significantly more patients uh, have uh, contrast reflux into the BD3 on imaging. Uh, this is uh, uh, not the same as the uh, usual uh, quoted duodenogastric reflux uh, by this literature, where we mainly focus on the reflux into the BD3. However, despite the significantly more reflux into the BD3, we find that it is not clinically as significant in terms of a significantly less cholangitis in a group uh, with an HD. And also, we, they do not have any significant symptoms, uh, clinical symptoms by the reflux in terms of recurrent abdominal pain. And the uh, long-term outcome in terms of anastomosis stricture is also comparable. So, and to conclude, uh, we want to uh, bring out your attention to that the laparoscopic excision of choridocal cysts with uh, construction is safe and feasible, and the uh, HD group have a, short, uh, have a better short-term outcome in terms of a uh, better operative time and blood loss, and also shorter intensive care stay. The long-term outcomes are comparable in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of uh, less, uh, 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 less uh, cholangitis. And as mentioned, the HD group have uh, proportionally more reflux uh, radiologically, but they are found to be, uh, have a better clinical outcome in terms of less cholangitis. And the limitation of our study is that it was a retrospective study only, and not all our patients received, uh, in the HJ group received the contrast study. To conclude, I would like to draw your attention to that uh, HD is an effective alternative to the conventional rule on why and, and technique in reconstructing after the laparoscopic excision of uh, cholidocosis in children. Thank you.